Hey Gearseekers, I'm Nick. We've covered heaps of different Oris panels on the channel, but Gigabyte's also started releasing an array of new Gigabyte branded panels that are a little bit cheaper, but also sport most of the features that their Oris counterparts do as well. This one's a little bit different though. This one right here, it's got a built-in KVM. In this video, we're gonna take a look at one of the most interesting panels we've seen in a while. It's Gigabyte's 27 inch IPS panel, the Gigabyte M27Q. It's 170 Hertz, it's 1440p and it's got a KVM. So let's see how it is. I've been using this monitor for about a week now to play games on and to tinker with and I've given it a really good run to see if this is good for gaming and productivity. The truth is, we've had this monitor here for about four months. We've had so much going on that we've only just got around to making this video now. The Gigabyte M27Q features a 27 inch edge lit IPS panel with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with a peak brightness of around 350 nits. It also features a 170 hertz refresh rate. Yep, 170 hertz, it's an odd refresh rate, but I don't think that's really a big deal. It actually works better in its favor. It's a flat panel with a response time of half a millisecond. It features AMD's FreeSync Premium Adaptive Sync technology. And although not NVIDIA G-Sync certified, it does work with G-Sync without any issues. And I did test this for an extended period of time and it worked well. The M27Q is an 8-bit panel and it supports 140% of the sRGB color space and around 92% of the DCI-P3 color space. The Gigabyte M27Q also has a standard 100mm Visa mount, so you shouldn't have any issues with mounting this to any existing monitor solution that you've already got. So if you've got a Visa arm on your desk or if you want to wall mount it, you should be good to go. The M27Q has a 178 degree wide viewing angle with a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio as well. It's got DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMI 2.0 ports, as well as a USB Type-C port, a headphone jack, a USB 3.0 uplink, and two USB 3.0 ports. The out-of-the-box calibration for a gaming monitor is quite good. The panel is pretty bright, and for extended periods, I reduced the monitor's brightness to around about 20%, and I think 20% is more than adequate. And the only reason why I do this is because when I'm testing stuff in this room, it's quite dark, and if it's, the monitor's too bright in a dark environment, it's gonna strain your eyes. The M27Q is a multi-purpose monitor that can be used for content creation and gaming, and that's really the point of this panel, but I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit later. The build quality is pretty good, and you shouldn't have any uses with this panel at all. It doesn't have any gamery aspects on it, which is a nice change for most gaming monitors. It kind of flies under the radar in the looks department until you turn it around. It's a little bit uh, reflective and shiny, but that shouldn't matter. It will fit in most use cases and spaces. So yeah, the design's quite good. I don't like the big Gigabyte logo on the front. I'm just not a huge fan of it. It sticks out too much, but if you're into that kind of thing, I guess it's fine. It's got a zero bezel design with a matte screen surface. The stand is fully height adjustable and tilt adjustable. And that's it. There's no rotation adjustment or swivel adjustment here. The M27Q has a little built-in nub style joystick on the back of the screen for the menu system, and it's easy to use and everything is pretty easy to understand. However, as usual with most of these modern panels, you don't need to use it. You can use the OSD Sidekick software instead. With the software, you can enable crosshairs, you can change the brightness, the contrast, picture in picture. You can do basically everything. And the only reason why they have a menu joystick on a monitor like this is for people who are using it for Mac OS, kind of like what I did with this video for testing it as well, or if you're using it in Linux. But you know what, Gigabyte? You should make this happen. You should make at least a Mac OS version of OSD Sidekick. Be the first to do this. You guys know you wanna do it, so you should do it. And just to address a few comments that we have had on previous monitor videos with the software integrations, this applies to basically every monitor regardless of who makes it. You won't just be able to attach the DisplayPort or HDMI cable to use these features. You do need to connect the included USB cable to use all of that connectivity. In regards to Adaptive Sync, it features AMD's FreeSync Premium technology and it will work with G-Sync as well. And this is the way that we use it the whole time because our gaming PC for testing has a 3060 Ti, so yeah, that makes sense. And we didn't notice any issues with anything with using G-Sync, so there's nothing important or interesting to report here. This panel is HDR400, but at only 350 nits, it doesn't feel bright enough for decent HDR. I did test it, it didn't wow me, and I 
actually don't really think it's worth talking about. Don't buy this panel for its HDR prowess because it doesn't have it. The standout feature for the M27Q though is nothing that I've spoken about yet because this is a pretty game changing feature, especially for someone like me who uses this type of stuff every day. It's got a built-in KVM. A KVM is typically a device used to share your keyboard, video and mouse, that's where the KVM comes from, across multiple computers. Now, like I mentioned, I use a KVM every day on my main setup because I use two PCs for everything that we do on the channel and I can use that one setup for both of those PCs. That setup though has an external box and everything plugs into that. The M27Q takes this one step further or closer, depending on how you look at it, by integrating those features right into the panel itself. With saying that though, it's not perfect. Uh, what, what I think happened here is they made this exceptionally good and really affordable panel and thought, hey, you know what would be cool? Let's use the ports that we already have and we should turn it into a KVM. And he, he, here's how it works with this panel anyway. Like most modern monitors, you have a USB 3 type B uplink port that allows you to plug USB stuff into your monitor and for controlling the monitor with the OSD Sidekick software. Pretty standard stuff, right? USB Type-C is also here for connecting things like laptops and iPads and devices that use USB-C for display output. Instead of them having multiple inputs that you need to switch to, they've added a handy button that allows you to switch the inputs and the USB pass-through, much like a traditional KVM. The huge caveat here is, unlike a true KVM, you only have a single USB Type-B uplink, meaning that one PC has to use it, and that's that. Most KVMs will have uplinks for all the PCs, and the USB Type-C port is an uplink for both display and USB pass-through in this case. This means that despite having four display inputs on this monitor, you can only connect two PCs to this display with the KVM feature. For instance, with this little M1 Mac Mini setup that I've got set up here, that this is the one that I use for testing as well, we have a single USB Type-C cable, it plugs into the Mac, that plugs into the monitor, and it carries the display and the USB through to the monitor, whereas our gaming PC uses the USB Type-B uplink port, and then the DisplayPort cable plugged into it as well. I hope this is all making sense that it's not confusing you guys too much. If you're using a laptop or a machine that can utilize DisplayPort over USB Type-C's protocol, this is actually pretty handy. A typical use case would be if you have a gaming PC that you use, but you also wanted to plug in your laptop or your iPad or your Mac Mini for productivity as a kind of docking station. I think the M27Q is as close as you can get to the perfect solution for that without spending hundreds of dollars on a dedicated KVM. Because to be honest, uh, most KVMs cost more than this monitor itself. Although this isn't a traditional KVM, I still think this is pretty useful. But for my particular use case, and this is going completely off the cuff, it's a whole different story, it's a whole different thing. Like I can't use a monitor like this because it doesn't do everything I need. However, we've got a KVM video coming up with level one tech set. We're gonna to touch on all of this. And just for the last time, I know that someone's gonna ask about this and I, I, I figured I'd just answer it in this video. You can use a USB hub if you wanna use stuff other than like mice and keyboards and you wanna use sound cards and all that stuff. As long as it's a powered hub, it should work no problem. And that's how I'm using it here. For gaming though, I really like the Gigabyte M27Q. The colors are nice and 1440p is kind of becoming the de facto standard for gaming anyway. It's kind of the perfect mix of pixel density and size for a panel like this. And I know there's gonna be people who are gonna be really pixel peeping this panel, but the reality is most of the things that you see in other videos about monitors like this are not really that important. And most of the time, and I'm being completely honest that you can put two panels that are wildly different next to each other and most people won't be able to tell the difference. That's me being absolutely honest. Uh, with that said, there's no noticeable ghosting and there's very minimal backlight bleed on black screens. Honestly, it's just not really worth talking about because it's not noticeable. If you're interested in a closer look at this panel, check out our mates over at Hardware Unbox. Tim did a great job of breaking this whole panel down, but watch that after this video. Wait, wait till I'm done here. To be very honest, there's only one thing that I disliked about the Gigabyte M27Q, if I have to be super picky, it's the fact that it doesn't have two USB Type-B uplinks. That would have made it God tier, but I understand why they did it. It's basically just to save money and save space. And this monitor is pretty cheap for what it is anyway. Other than that though, I, I think this is pretty spot on. And I would absolutely recommend this panel to anyone 
who wants to have all of these features jammed into a well-rounded package. You're getting a KVM, you're getting a 1440p 170Hz IPS panel, you're getting excellent color coverage with the whole color gamut, you're getting good calibration, and you're getting all of this for a steal of a price. This easily competes with some of the much more expensive 1440p IPS panels out there. And here's the best news with this panel, right? The price. If you're interested in grabbing the Gigabyte M27Q, they're going for around 379 US dollars or around 449 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. That is um, exceptionally good value. It's pretty hard to beat in terms of price and all of the features that this thing has. It is a banger of a panel. If you've got any questions about this or anything else I mentioned in the video, just feel free to drop a comment down below. If I missed anything, just let me know. I'll probably answer it in the comments. Let us know what you think about the M27Q. Yeah, this thing is pretty hard to beat for both price to performance. It's, yeah. The KVM as well. They should have been doing this for years and years. I, I use KVM every day, so it's a big deal to me. I also wanted to add this, and we always do this with all of our monitor videos. We do this in a nice and easy to digest format for people who might not know everything about monitors or what everything means. And we just talk about the things that regular users will find useful. I like to leave decisions in your hands and we just like to make this as simple as possible. For a more in-depth look, please go and look at Hardware Unbox video. Like I said, Tim did a really good job with this panel and yeah, that's what we're here for, to kind of make that a little bit easier to understand. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and honestly, KVMs and monitors. I've been waiting years for this. Bring, bring it on, bring on more. I know there's a BenQ panel that does it now too, actually. Maybe we'll get our hands on that one. Thanks for watching.